My name is Parul Rai and I'm a student at the University of Texas at Dallas. I study neuroscience and I aspire to be a doctor. And in my free time, I dance a lot of Latin styles such as salsa and bachata. And I play the piano, violin and guitar. And I also speak, in addition to Hindi and English, I speak Spanish and Portuguese. So the MCAT is unique in that it is the exam that is necessary for admission into medical school in the United States and Canada. So it's called the Medical College Admissions Test, so MCAT. And um, it's really different because it's actually a seven and a half hour exam. So just taking it is kind of a marathon uh, within itself. And it's definitely considered to be one of the most difficult exams in the United States at least because the span of subjects that it covers is so wide. Um, it it uh, covers biology, chemistry, organic chemistry, biochemistry, um, physics, sociology, psychology, and on top of that there's also sort of a logic and reasoning section as well. So um, there are just a lot of bases to cover on that exam. Um, the admissions process in an American medical school is actually quite complicated and just doing well on the MCAT isn't going to guarantee a spot in even the best medical schools in the country. Um, they also look at other factors such as my grades in, my, in the classes that I've taken. They'll consider my clinical experiences, whether it's volunteering or working somewhere. Um, they'll consider my extracurricular activities. I'll have to write essays, get letter of rec letters of recommendation, um, and then go to interviews. So there are a lot of factors to consider, but obviously the MCAT is one of them. Even though I scored in the 100th percentile, they'll also put high value on someone who scored on the 99th percentile or the 98th percentile. And just the numbers isn't going to make or break my admission versus other people who are in a similar boat. So um, there are a lot of factors that they're going to consider, but the MCAT is definitely a huge one of many variables. So I would say that the preparation for MCAT starts on day one of college. That is to say that starting from the first day of college, um, we take classes such as general chemistry, organic chemistry, biology. That's part of the coursework anyway. So I would say when someone starts studying for the MCAT in a more explicit sense, they're already ready in some sense where they're not starting from level zero. Now, in terms of pre pre for myself preparing for the MCAT more explicitly, um, I would say that I started that in um, July of last year and I took the exam in March of this year. And it was kind of like an exponential curve where at first I was just sort of easing myself into it and um, starting to see what the questions were like, trying to familiarize myself with the format of the exam. And then once my classes started, then I started to look over the content um, and things like that. And then once um, I had a break, I had winter break, and that was a break for about three to four weeks. And I studied really like hardcore during that time. But, um, and I was actually planning on taking the exam in January, but I ended up having to postpone the exam because um, my study environment just wasn't conducive to learning. I had a lot of pressure from my family to sort of stay at home with them during the holidays and spend time with them, but it didn't work out. So then I spent another two months between January and March where I sort of took easier classes in terms of my college coursework and then um, studied for the MCAT. And then within the last three weeks or so uh, before the exam, I actually even stopped uh, paying as much attention to my classes and focused on just preparing for this exam. And I would spend anywhere between 10 and 15 hours a day just studying for this exam. I would say that the biggest challenge that I had was that when I was studying and doing practice exams, I actually hit a plateau and it lasted for quite a couple of months. And I was getting nervous as the weeks were creeping by and the test day was getting closer that what am I going to do to see a change in my score? And I was starting to get discouraged because of that, especially because um, the MCAT is considered to be one of the most difficult exams for graduate school in the United States. And so it's already kind of intimidating in nature. And sometimes um, the exam will ask questions that 
I would not have had any way of knowing the answer to those. And that's just the fact, but it's still obviously possible to do well even if you don't know the answer to every single question. So um, to study for, okay, so to take the MCAT, the first section is a chemistry and physics section. So they'll ask questions from general chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, and they might even sprinkle a couple of biology and biochemistry um, questions in there. The second section, and that section is 95 minutes. The, section, the second section is a 90 minute section, and that one is a, more of a logic and reasoning based section. And there's a passage in, um, in any subject that's not science. So it could be history, it could be art. And then um, there, there are questions related to the passage. It's a little bit more complex than just reading comprehension. It's also more about interpreting the author's perspective and trying to see um, how you could apply the scenario given in a passage into the real world, things like that. And then the third section is a 95 minute section, um, which is a biology and biochemistry section. And then the last section is also a 95 minute section for psychology and sociology. And on all of the science based sections, there are some individual questions um, that aren't related to a passage, but there are also a lot of questions where they give us a passage and then there are um, a few questions associated with the passage in which we have to kind of use the knowledge that we have to answer the questions related to the passage that's given. It is definitely possible for someone living in a rural community to take the MCAT, but with that said, they might have to overcome some more barriers. For example, this person would need to have access to a computer because it is a computerized test. Um, and this person would also need to be able to invest in um, some, some sort of study materials um, and be able to travel to a testing center. And to my understanding, there aren't testing centers within India itself, but there are some in nearby countries like um, I believe Thailand and Singapore have testing centers and Indian citizens can travel there to take, those, um, to take the test. Uh, so there are a few more barriers for someone living in a rural community to um, go all the way to a different country and take the exam, but it's not impossible. As far as I know, um, they provide some financial aid to uh, people who are taking the exam from the US and Canada simply because um, their, their uh, format of rec record keeping and being able to prove that um, someone is in need is just a lot more standardized that way. So as far as I know, I don't think that that option is available to uh, someone who lives in India. Um, so I took a prep course where they delivered content, and by that I mean the science-based content mostly, uh, for a total of 123 hours. And then um, I would say on top of that, the number one resource that I used to prepare were, was the materials uh, given out by the AAMC, again that's the American Association of Medical Colleges, and that's available um, online on their website. Um, but the reason why that resource was the most helpful is that they were the test makers themselves that created those questions and the passages. So out of all the third party companies like Kaplan and the Princeton Review, the AAMC is going to be the closest to the real MCAT. So their materials were by far the most helpful in terms of um, getting some practice and getting practice questions and getting an accurate assessment of where I was um, as I was studying for this test. Now, um, a resource that I used for a reference in terms of books was the Kaplan books. I didn't read those books cover to cover or anything like that, but I would look in the back of the chapter or in the back of the book in the index and try to see if there was a concept that I didn't know or that I wanted to learn more about and then just refer to the Kaplan books for that. 
Okay, I would definitely say that it's important to have a support group um, consisting of a diverse group of friends. So for me, for example, I had a friend who had taken the exam before me and she would give me her perspectives on it. I had a friend who was going to test um, the same week as me. I had a friend who wasn't even trying to be a doctor. He was in the engineering field, but he would still um, support me and um, bring me to his office to, just to give me a study space and just help me cool down um, so that I can just get my mind off the exam and refresh my brain. And that brings me to the next point. Definitely take breaks. Um, within the MCAT itself, there are some uh, breaks while you're taking the exam. After all, the total, ex the total exam time is seven and a half hours. So it is important to take those breaks, not only during the exam, but also while you're studying um, so that your brain doesn't get burnt out. Like I said, I was studying 10 to 15 hours a day, but when I was eating lunch, I was just eating lunch and not having a book open. When I was about to relax, I would just sit down and wind down and relax because it's really important to let your brain recharge. And I would say another thing to do is to prepare um, for the test conditions as best as you can. Just prepare the food that you're gonna bring when you're taking the test. Um, prepare um, for any, anything that could go wrong at the test center. Um, and as for things not to do, I would say don't freak out and don't get intimidated by sort of the nature of the exam because plenty of people have conquered it and it's possible for you watching to do it as well. Um, also, just take every question one question at a time. So don't get overwhelmed that this is an exam with over 200 questions and you have to answer all of them and the level of difficulty can be, um, it can be very difficult sometimes. Um, just take it one question at a time. Um, so yeah, I would say that these are the major do's and don'ts of the exam. Okay, so I would say that definitely do not get discouraged if you ever plateau like I did, or if you're not seeing the results that you want. Um, because if you just sort of keep studying and keep putting your brain to it and just keep striving for the goal that you want, you will get there. Um, and as I said before, just don't get intimidated by the nature and the reputation of the exam. Just um, know that it, it can be approachable and just um, believe in yourself. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found my advice to be helpful. And if you'd like to learn more about what I did when I was studying for the MCAT, I have my own YouTube channel and you can search it up by my name, Paral Rai. And good luck to anyone out there who's actually going to take this exam.